of rest. Amen. And that should bring joy in the heart of Christians who are secured in God. What is that joy of salvation? It is having peace with God. And it is having the peace of God which passeth all understanding. That is why a Christian who loves God, a Christian who is holding on to his faith in the Lord, a Christian who is a growing, matured in the Lord Jesus Christ can have peace no matter what he may experience in life. Amen? Romans 5, 1 and 2. The Bible says in Romans 5, 1 and 2, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Amen? You see, just imagine how dreadful you are going to feel if you are an enemy of God. How fearful you are going to be. The Bible says that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. It may be a chastisement to the Christian. How much more to those that are adversary of the Lord? When the Bible says uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians, I believe, 1, uh, 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance of them that believe not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How dreadful it is, but how joyful it is to have peace with God. Amen? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In verse number 2, it says, by whom also we have access by faith. Amen? Access. We can go straight. We can go direct to Him into His grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So this is the joy of our salvation. This is the joy that we are feeling. Look at John chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. Oh, what joy will it bring? He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Amen? God knows me. God knows you. God knows his children. You see, sometimes just to be known by the president is already a source of great joy. To be known by a celebrity is already a source of great joy. To be known by a person that is popular is already a source of great joy. How much more that we are known by God. Amen? I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. You see, as Christians, we no longer need to search for the fountain of youth because we already have eternal life. Meaning to say, we may grow old here, we may die here, but one day we will resurrect, and in our resurrected body, we are going to be that way forever and forever, wherein we're not going to feel sickness anymore no more sorrow no more crying no more sleepless nights no more problems no more persecution no more tribulation but joy forever and forever in the presence of god amen eternal life and they shall never perish not only that but neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand Whenever we are in the hand of Jesus, then we are secured. Amen. You see, only a stronger person can snatch us out from the hand of another person. And praise God, nobody is stronger than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the almighty God. And not only that, in verse 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of the Father's hand. See the corroboration of the Father and the Son in our salvation. And no matter what happened in Ephesians, it says that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. So that is the joy of our salvation. There is the joy of God's promises. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. There is the joy of God's provision. But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There is the promise of God's protection. There is the promise of God's peace. There is the promise of uh, God's word. 
there is the promise of God's guidance. There is the promise of God's uh, a God giving us understanding according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So there is so much joy if you are saved. Amen. There is so much joy if you know that you belong to God. And that is the reason why a saved person has no reason to be sad if he is living according to the will of God. Amen. There is joy, joy, joy in serving Jesus. I am happy in the service of the King. There must be overwhelming joy as we serve the Lord because of the salvation that God had given unto us. But that joy can be taken away from us. We can lose that joy of salvation, but never our salvation. Because we already have eternal life. Our salvation is already secured. The devil cannot take away what the Lord has given unto us. But then again, the laughter may stop. The smile may fade away. The joy may turn into mourning. That joy may turn into tears. Why? Because the devil is out there to rub up us of that joy. Because Satan knew that a joyless Christian is ineffective in serving the Lord. That is why he will do everything to rob us of that joy that the Lord has given us that accompanies his salvation. So the loss of salvation's joy is occasioned by our yielding to the flesh. Whenever we yield to the flesh, then we are going to lose the joy of our salvation. The flesh is against God. And that is why when we yield to something that is against God or contrary to God, then we are going to lose the joy of that salvation. Look at Romans 8.5. Look at what the Bible says. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And when you mind the things of the flesh, it means that you are loving the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we saw in the life of Demas that he left Paul in the ministry having uh, loving the present world. And he backslid and he lost the joy of his salvation. He lived a miserable life. He lived a life that is away from God. And this is also the same thing that David experienced when he yielded to the flesh, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba, when he committed murder against Uriah, when he showed his pride by numbering the armies of Israel, when David tried to get the glory from God, then he lose that salvation. Yes, he is still the man after God's own heart. Yes, he is still the greatest king of Israel. And yet, during this time, there was no joy in the life of David. Let's go back to our text and let us see what happened to David. In this Psalms, chapter 51. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So, he's asking mercy from God. Why? Because he transgressed the law of God. He disobeyed the Ten Commandments. He disobeyed the statutes of God. He says, Lord, please wash me thoroughly. Why? Because he felt that he was dirty. He felt that he was a, uh, a dirty rags before the Lord. And he cannot offer anything to God that is acceptable because of the dirt that he has, because of the sin that he committed. He said, cleanse me from my sin. Sin 
defiles. Sin stains. Sin will blacken the spiritual life of a Christian. He says, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. David is actually saying, when I wake up in the morning, I remember my sin. When I eat my lunch, I remember my sin. Whenever I close my eyes in the evening, my sin is with me. And maybe David is even saying, even in my dreams, my sins are chasing me. He says that my sin is ever before me. Look at verse number 4. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. You see, every sin is a sin against God. We may sin against our fellow men, but actually it is a sin against God. Because every sin is a sin against the character of God. Because God is holy. Because God is uh, righteous. Because God is just. So whenever we, we do unholy things, whenever we do unrighteous things, whenever we do unjust things, then we are sinning before God. And that he says, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. God never commits mistakes whenever he judges. When God says we are guilty, then we are guilty. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, this is the reason why David was a man after God's own heart. Because whenever David sinned, whenever he commit sin before God, then he's always ready to acknowledge that sin. And you know who our God is? God has an amazing grace. That whenever you, you ask forgiveness, whenever you recognize your sin, whenever you accept your sin, and whenever you ask for the mercy of God, then our God is merciful. Our God is gracious that he will forgive us and he will give us another chance. Amen? That is God. You see, the reason why we cannot do this is because we are not God. But whenever we can forgive and whenever we can forget, then that is the time that we are like God. That's the time that we are like God. Verse number 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me. With Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You see, when God forgives, He can make He can even make you a better person. Much better than before. Much better than before you committed that sin before God. Look at verse number eight. Make me to hear joy and gladness. You see, when David committed sin. Whatever he hears, there is no joy. There was no gladness in him. He felt miserable inside. That even maybe when they're singing uh, heavenly songs, he could not hear joy. He could hear only misery. He can hear only pain. Why? Because there is no gladness and the bones which thou hast broken... May rejoice. That is how David felt when he committed sin. It was he has a broken bone. And just imagine. Just a torn ligament will make you feel excruciating pain. How much more when you experience a broken bone? You see, the joy is lost when we lose sight of the value of human souls. Not only that when we commit sin, but when we do not see people as human beings with eternal soul, that if they will not repent of their sins and accept Jesus, they will die and they will go to hell. You see, do you remember the account in the Bible when, when uh, the Lord Jesus Christ healed a blind man? The first time that he healed him, he asked him, what do you see? He, he said, I saw men as trees. Meaning to say, without soul. Meaning to say, just like an inanimate object. But then again, the Lord Jesus Christ touched again his eyes. And then, 
What do you see? He says, I can see clearly now. Amen? So whenever we lose sight of the value of the human soul, then we are going to lose the joy of our salvation. Why? Because the, the Bible is very clear that, that it brings joy whenever you bring the sheep into the fold. Amen? That, that how beautiful are the feet of those that bring good tidings and how much joy will it bring even in heaven, in the midst of God, whenever one soul repented of his sin and whose name was written in the Lamb's book of life. So whenever we lose sight of the human value of the souls, then we lose that joy of salvation. And then, whenever we neglect the Lord's work, then we lose the joy of our salvation. Amen? Amen. Hindi pwedeng maging masaya ang kristyano na hindi naglilingkod sa Diyos. Hindi ako, Pastor, masaya ako eh. Hindi ka kristyano. Bakit ka magiging masaya nang hindi ka nakapaglilingkod sa Diyos? Amen? Bakit ka masaya na ikaw ay matapos mong iligtas, ikaw ay nakaupot, nakatunganga na lang, at hinihintay ang pagbabalik ng Diyos o ang kamatayan, alinman sa kanila ang mauna? A Christian who got saved is created by God unto good works. And serving God is a good work. Amen? Kaya pag naligtas ka, magkakaroon ka ng natural na damdamin at pagnanasa na paglingkuran ang ating Panginoon. Amen? Magkakaroon ka ng, ng tinatawag na na hindi masupil na kagustuhan na matagpuan ng iyong sarili sa gitna ng kalooban ng Panginoong Diyos. Na hindi ka mapapakali na kahit dumating ang takip silim o bukang liwayway sa iyong buhay, ngunit sa bawat panahon, sa bawat dako, sa bawat pag-ikot ng mundo, ay pagnanasaan mo na ikaw ay nakapagbibigay ng kaluwalatian sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Bakit? Eh kasi iniligtas tayo at ang dahilan ng ating kaligtasan upang humayo, ipangaral ng Ebanghelyo, hindi tayo iniligtas upang hintayin na lamang ang kanyang pagbabalik nang wala tayong ginagawa sa harapan ng Panginoon. We are saved to serve. Yun yung, yung kaya tayo iniligtas ng Diyos. Kasi kung ang kaligtasan natin ay langit lamang, di sinsanay nasa langit na tayo ngayon. Pero dahil tayo narito pa, merong na isang Diyos na ipagawa sa bawat isa sa atin at yun nga ay ipangaral sa iba upang kanila ring maranasan ang kagalakan na ating naranasan nung tayo po'y iligtas ng ating Panginoon sa ating mga kasalanan, sa kaparusahan ng kasalanan at darating ang panahon sa presensya ng kasalanan. Amen? The loss of Salvation's joy can be caused by compromising the truth. Whenever we compromise the truth of the Word of God, then we are going to lose our joy. Why? Because the Bible is very clear. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So when you compromise the truth, then you are becoming a prisoner of error. And no prisoner can ever be joyful. Maghanap ka ng presong masaya, maihirapan kang makakita liban na lang kung ang matatagpuan mo si Apostol Pablo. Amen? Siya lang ang alam ko na preso na masaya at ang mga apostol. Sapagkat si, si uh, uh, Pedro at si Pablo at si Silas kahit sila'y nasa kulungan, umaawit pa rin ng mga papuri sa Panginoon. They can sing even inside the prison cell. Why? Because, because the joy, listen, 
the joy that God gives that accompany our salvation is not ano ba yung tamang term? It is not dependent on what is happening on the outside. It is not dependent on our circumstances. It is dependent on the faithfulness of God. And because God is faithful, therefore that joy will endure no matter what situation, what circumstances we may be facing. Ang ibang tao masaya pag malaya. Ang ibang tao masaya pag mapera. Ang ibang tao masaya kapag ka healthy. Ang ibang tao masaya kapag ka lahat ng bagay ay naaayon sa kanilang kagustuhan. But the Apostle Paul says, In whatsoever state I am with, I found myself there with to be content. Why? Because he's the one who says that uh, godliness with contentment or contentment with godliness is great gain. Why? Because for the Apostle Paul, Jesus is the source of his joy. Amen? Pag ang ginawa mong source ng joy mo, asawa mo, may time na malulungkot ka. Pag ang ginawa mong source ng joy mo, pera, madalas wala ka. Kapag ang ginawa mong source ng iyong joy ay ibang tao, madalas madidisappoint ka. Kapag ang ginawa mong source ng joy ang sarili mo, tuwing aarap ka sa salamin, lulungkot ka. But if you will make the Lord Jesus Christ as the source of your joy, then your joy will be constant. Why? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because He's constant, He's immutable, He never changes, then the joy that you will feel will never abandon you. No matter what happened. Bakit? Kasi consistent siya eh. Hindi ka paluluhain ng Panginoon kung hindi rin lang tears of joy. Amen? Ano sabi ni Paul? For I am persuaded. Persuaded. For, 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 I am pers- for, 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 for I am persuaded, he said, that neither death nor life. Amen? Persuaded. Limang beses inulit ni Pablo. <laughs> persuaded siya. Wala siyang duda. Amen? Ano sabi ni Paul? I am resolved. Ah, hindi ba? None of these things move me. Why? Because his joy is anchored on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ is the rock and the rock is a firm foundation. Amen? It cannot be moved. It cannot be moved. Jesus is my Savior. I shall not be moved. Amen? Amen? Pero pag-offering na, move na kayo. Amen. <laughs> Hindi applicable yun doon. So we, we need to hold on to the truth. That's why the Bible says, contend for the faith. Why? When the truth is compromised, then we will lose our joy. You see, whenever we see churches, especially Christians that are being robbed, by pastors teaching first fruits offering that they need to give their one month salary and they have to give a lavish gift to the pastor during Pastor Sunday. It grieves us. Why? Because we know that these pastors are making merchandise of the people, hiding to the teaching that if you will bless the pastor, then God will bless you more. Chapter and verse, may I ask. Yan ang danger ng ano eh. Nagsimula sa mga appreciation eh. Pastor, is it a sin to appreciate? No, it's not. Is it a sin to appreciate the pastor? No, it's not. But remember, the pastor did not heed the call of God just to be appreciated. The appreciation that a pastor is shooting for is not the appreciation of the members, but the appreciation of the one who called him. And that is God. And sometimes because of this show of giving too much importance to the pastor, I'm a pastor, don't uh, get me wrong. 
But I do not want you to give more importance to me than I should have. Because I am only a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is my desire that you honor God. That you love God. That you worship God. Even at my expense. Why? Because my joy as God's representative is to represent Him clearly and with dignity among the people of God. So that the people of God will appreciate the one and the only Savior who is the cause of everything that we are experiencing now. Kasi, kakaano, appreciate natin si Pastor. Pastor Sunday tayo, yung Sunday na yun, talagang si Pastor ang bida. Hindi pa na kontento, buong month na ng October, naging pastors, ano na, appreciation month, naging international na. Ano yung nangyari sa karami ng pastor? Naging self-entitled. Subukan mong October, walang bumati sa pastor at walang mag-appreciate. Makikita mo yan, pagkamat hindi papakita sa'yo, naglulupasay, naguuumiyak. Wala man lang nakaapulala sa akin. Wala man lang naka-appreciate sa akin. Ang Diyos, ano sabi ng Bible? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Huwag kang mag-alala, pastor. Huwag kang mag-alala, kristyano. Ano man ang ginagawa mo, wala mang pumapansin, wala mang tumatapik sa iyong balikat. Tatandaan mo sa langit, sa aklat ng Panginoon. Lahat ng yan nakasulat. Kaya sa araw ng pag-uukom, bubuksan ng aklat at ibibigay sa iyo ang kantimpala ayon sa ginawa mo na hindi masusunog ng apoy. Amen? God knows what He's doing. He's not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love. And I'd rather be appreciated by God than any person in this world. Amen? So, Pastor, pag na-appreciate ka, nagagalit ka, hindi. Ba't ako magagalit, in-appreciate ako. Pero ayoko na overacting naman yung pag-appreciate ninyo. Na parang, eh, sabihin ko sa inyo, may mga pastor parang akala mo, sila ang Diyos eh. Sila nabok ang bibig eh. Hindi na Panginoon, kaya sa Revelation, nakatok na Panginoon eh. Sabi niya, Hoy! <laughs> Simbahan ko yan! Pagbukas naman ng pinto! Ay, hindi lang sinabi ng Panginoon, parang awa niyo na! <laughs> Buksan niyo naman yan! Hindi niyo ba napapansin, nasa labas na ako! Why? Meron na tayong Pastor Sunday. Meron na tayong Worker Sunday. Meron na tayong Family Sunday. Meron na tayong Friend Sunday. Meron na tayong Veteran Sunday. Meron na tayong, magkakaroon na tayo ng Frontliner Sunday. Magkakaroon na tayo ng Midliner Sunday. Magkakaroon na tayo ng Backliner Sunday. Tandaan nyo, there are only 52 Sundays in a year. Baka dumating ang time, wala ng Lord Sunday. Kasi, pinopropose na yung pastor's wife sa Sunday. <laughs> And then, pastor's children Sunday. Siyempre, papatalo ba naman yan? Mga kapatid, tama na. Hindi ba natin ma-apply na lang yung sinabi ni John the Baptist, He must increase and I must decrease. Hindi pa ba sapat yun para magkaroon tayo ng joy na ibinibigay ng Diyos sa puso ng mga tao na may pagmamahal sa Panginoon. So when we compromise the truth, then we lose the joy of our salvation. That is why in our time when you fight for the truth, they will consider you as a renegade. When you stand for the truth, they will judge you as a bigot. When you stand for the truth, they will judge you as judgmental. Intolerant. Racist. 
Every term that they could imagine. They're going to throw at you. Why? Because they said that no matter what you say, behind the pulpit, you must always be politically correct. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be biblically correct. And that is the only standard that we have because the Bible is our final authority. Amen? And then we lose the year of our salvation when we forget the Lord's deliverance. Whenever we forget how God saved us, whenever we forget to appreciate the greatness of God's salvation, then we are going to lose the joy of our salvation. So now, how can we recover that joy when we lose it? We already read it in Psalms uh, 51, 1 to 5. Number one is we need to confess our sins. We need to acknowledge our sins. We need to confess it to God. You know what David says? To thee. To thee alone did I sin. So he confessed his sin before God. He admitted that he was a sinful person. He admitted that like what the Apostle Paul says in me, in my flesh, nothing is good. Because he says that his very shape is in the shape of iniquity. That is what David says. Not only that, but in verse number 7, we must cry for purging. That whatever it is that made us lose our salvation, then we need to purge it out of our system, of our spiritual uh, system, of our moral system. And then in verse 11 of chapter 51, he says, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So we can see that David, in, in verse 11, and verse, uh, I think, verse 10, that, that he, is, uh, he is asking God for a clean heart. He says, purge me and, and, and are clean. That his heart will be clean. Why? Because out of the heart are the issues of life. If our heart is dirty, then what will come out will always be dirty. And in verse 11, he said, in 10, creating me a clean heart. In verse 11, he said, Cast me not away from thy presence, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is come and go. That is why when the Holy Spirit is taken from you by God in the Old Testament, there is uh, no joy. There is the loss of, of the joy of that salvation. But you will never lose your salvation because salvation is a promise that they are going to uh, receive when the Lord Jesus Christ died and resurrected from the dead. But in our time in the New Testament, because Jesus Christ already died and resurrected and has completed his work, then the Holy Spirit will remain with us forever. Amen. But then even though the Holy Spirit is here, we can still lose our joy if we are committing sin or transgression before the Lord. And in verse 13, David says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And then uh, uh, David knew that if that joy will not be restored, there is nothing that he can do. There is nothing that he can accomplish. But when that joy was restored, look at verse number 13. He says, Then will I teach transgressors their ways. Then I'm going to, to teach sinners so that they will be converted. I can teach them uh, to forsake the transgression because I committed it, I experienced it, and because of God, was able to overcome it. So, what happened? David, when he was forgiven by God, and when his joy was restored, became a better person than what he was before. Look at verse number 14. And then, until we end, deliver me from blood guiltiness of God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. You see, because he was delivered from guilt, then his tongue sang aloud the righteousness of God. 
O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. And because of the restoration of that joy, there was praise in the mouth of David and in the lips of David. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. You see, it is not the sacrifice, it is not the offering. Again, kamatapos na tayo kapatid. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. If we are broken because of our sin, then God will honor the contriteness that we are going to show. Amen? Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. When you're restored, that's the time. That a sacrifice of righteousness with burnt offering and whole burnt offering will be accepted by God into the altar. Why? Because God is more interested in us, our well-being, our spiritual condition, than the things that we can do for Him. It is exemplified in the case of uh, King Saul when uh, Samuel told him very explicitly, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. So that is the joy of our salvation. We can, that's how we lose the joy of our salvation. And this is how we can recover the joy of our salvation. So I hope and I pray that we're going to guard that joy. And if ever, because of our foolishness, our sin, our neglect, somehow we lost it then let us not waste time so that we can regain the joy of our salvation. So we stand the place.